All right, all right, all right. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the No Offense Podcast with your host, Tom and... Rogelio, what's up? What's up? How have you been, Ro? Been pretty good, pretty good. Busy, super, super busy. Had to take a little nap on Friday and get a little tipsy on Saturday to just, you know, get the weak blues off off my back. You feel me? How about you? you? man. I feel you. Yeah, it's been good. Um, Seattle is getting a little bit more rainy, a little bit more cold. Okay. Uh, I don't have any outdoorsy gear because I'm like a silly ass Texan. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So we have some stuff to talk about today. Um, first, I have a little disclaimer, um, and all that is all that I, I have to say is this is a lesson I think everybody needs to take to heart, and that is look for the best in people when you are arguing or debating or rather assume that your opponent or the person you're conversating with is coming from a good place instead of uh, assuming the worst or just trying to get your point out or you know you know what I'm saying like what you've experienced this row right right so I think a good way to say it is instead of talk listening to reply listen to listen you know what I'm saying like Don't just already have your replies in your head. Really listen and try to dissect what the person is saying so that you can have a fruitful, good conversation. And it's not just both of y'all on the defensive trying to see who's going to win in a battle of wits with your homie. Right. Also, like, so, like, in good faith. So, assume, like, okay, this is a big problem in the election and in American politics, uh, Republican versus Democrat, is that it's... A lot of times there's like these allegations that the other side doesn't want the same thing that you want for the country. Some people are classy and they'll at least say like, oh, yeah, I know that they have the same goals in mind. Like we just want the country to be better. But, you know, we just have different ways of thinking about it. Like I think over the past 10 years, less and less people have rhetoric like that. And more and more people are like, actually, they want to turn the world, you know, turn America into a globalist society with no borders and or whatever it may be like right. ass, assume that your opponent wants the best and that will help you uh have a more fruitful discussion and um like have might. a greater good clause in your own head every time you have a conversation with someone you know like you're both trying to reach the greater good you're just right. trying to get consensus of how to get there you see, you see what i'm saying right this is like a big problem that our friend casey has shout out to casey i love casey. you casey you're a great guy <laughs> casey casey you're my best friend i love you uh but <laughs> listen casey and other people like casey um it's not good to just like throw up your arms and like just give up on 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 the world because basically we're in this world for maybe like a hundred years if we're lucky and then we die at the end and throughout that it's going to be a pain and suffering and fighting and debating unless you go become like a monk and like chill on an island and then you'll just suffer by yourself but if you're going to be engaged in an active member of the community in the world you're going to have to like engage with other people and And people are not going to agree with you and people are going to say stupid things and people are going to come from bad places, but you can't just be like, well, they're illogical or they're irrational or they don't know, you know, like you have to like assume the best, have some compassion, realize that your masterful logic, if it really is masterful, is not going to just like win everybody over and that's just like not how people work. Right. Like you're not going to be having a conversation. You know what I'm yeah, exactly. You're not going to be having a conversation with someone and like with your logic, your masterful logic like that you just you happen to have in your head. You're not just going to be able to translate that to them by saying, "Oh, whatever," you know, like you don't understand. You know, that's the, that's like counterintuitive to getting them to understand your viewpoint is getting upset with them for not understanding or from you know, you know, saying the same thing that other people in, in that same demographic have said. I think we're being ambiguous about the yeah. Casey situation because, you know, that was a private conversation. But I, I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. But our about, friend so. Casey does this a lot where um, – it, not just him. A lot of people do this where they – you know, they're just like, oh, the other side, you know, they're just not being logical. They're wrong. So, you know, I'm done with it. But unfortunately, we all have the job of at least trying to convince the other side or vice versa. 
Um, so moving on from that, just wanted to have a little rant about having good faith in your opponents or people you're discussing things with. I've got a little bit of housekeeping. Um, actually, we don't have any housekeeping. Um, no, we don't. Just uh, I guess still we can working. cover some recent stuff that happened in the world. Yeah. Okay. Well, so you, you, you what has been, um, I guess, recent personal happenings we covered. Uh, there's something that I've been watching really recently that has been – uh, just really entertaining, uh, very very interesting, and it's this project on YouTube called the Ask Project, and essentially it's a guy who lives in Israel and he goes. Um, did I talk about this last time? I feel like I talked about this. No, last time. no, I, okay. I don't think you did. I don't think you did. Okay, uh, I think I've just brought this up with somebody else before. But anyway, so it's a guy who lives in Israel and he goes across Israel and Palestine. People send him questions and he asks people questions like. Uh, Palestinians, he'll ask, would you have an Israeli neighbor? And is, is Israelites, he'll ask, you know, um, what do you think about Palestinians? And what do you think about Muhammad? And what do you think about Islam? Uh, do you think that you can ever achieve a one state or two state solution? And for me, the, I don't know how much you know about Israel, Palestine, but that whole situation is just so fascinating to me. And yeah, this video it's... series really encapsulates it. Um, yeah, Israel, Palestine is, is it a subject that really, really, really interests me because there's so many layers to it, you know, and I, I know that eventually we're going to cover an, an episode that goes in depth to the layers, but there's so many layers and it's kind of similar to, well, no, you know what? Scratch that. I'm not even going to say that, but yeah, there's so many layers to it and, um, such an interesting topic. And a lot of the times as Westerners, we look at it almost like as it can never happen over here, but I really, I, I believe that a lot of those things are like, a lot of those issues are very similar to some issues that are happening in this area, you know, yeah. like the idea, like the idea of like us versus them, you know, that's just like a basic human principle, you know, like us mm-hmm. versus them. And that's the same way that they're over there, you know, like, oh, well, we have, we belong in this area because this is our area historically. Oh, but we live here. We lived here like most more recently than you have. Like you're colonizing us. You know, there's there's a lot of layers to that. So I think yeah. a good parallel, I think a parallel I see is um, between uh, kind of like the African-American controversy slavery. in this situation, kind of like slavery. It's like a lot of white people today um, uh, are basically – you know, like, okay, my ancestors did this horrible thing. You know, I had literally nothing to do with it. Um, even my grandmother, who's like 85 or whatever, like, obviously she didn't own slaves. And, you know, pro- you know, I don't even know if we had slaves in our, in our family, you know, a- ancestors ago. But regardless, it's pretty much assumed that, you know, wh- all white people had some type of hand in this sort of system, right? Um, historically, which is more or less true depending on or ben- I think I think the I think the issue nowadays is benefited. benefit yeah like there's like there's intrinsic benefits from being white and having your own right. slaves I don't want to get in, I don't want to get it right. too into that yeah. I just wanted to say the parallel there is that I think that a lot of it is Israeli people um, you know they were just you know especially the younger generation just born in you know in Israel or um, or what have you and and it's kind of it's shitty for the Palestinians who are displaced. It's also shitty for the people who were born there, as Israeli Jews. It's also shitty for the um, Israeli people who suffered through you know the Holocaust. Uh, there's so many factors. It's not right. like oh you know because you will ask in some of the videos they will ask Palestinians about what the solution is to the situation there, and they will say like all the Jews should pack up and leave, and. The is Israelis in their def- in the Israeli defense uh, or in, in defense of, of the Israelis, they tend to be more amicable from the evidence that I've seen towards having some type of solution. But I think there's a lot of evidence that it is um, Israeli people have overstepped their bounds in settling in like the West Bank and um, and treating Palestinians and Arab Israelis kind of like second class or third class citizens. Um, so they say like, oh yeah, we're all about, you know, Palestinians are good, like just come on over. But at the same time, it's like a Jewish state. And I think it's kind of like, I think it's kind of like, and I could be totally wrong, but I think it's kind of like the Islamic uh, states that not, not ISIS, just states that are uh, <laughs> predominantly 
Muslim, where basically the religion is infused with the the law and like the society. I think that's it's like that with Judaism there, not quite in the same sense of like Sharia law, but just in that like Hanukkah is very very. So you can't really say it's a it's a secular state in that it's very very clearly predominantly Jewish. And yeah, you Jewish. can say Palestinians are. Oh yeah, sure you're welcome here, but I think they feel like second class citizens, and I think they probably there's probably a, a, a problem with prejudice there. I haven't looked at the statistics. Uh, absolutely no. I, I've I've talked to a Palestinian, and he says that it's like imagine imagine being in class, and there's a big bully in your class. And he's has his finger right to your face, and he says, "I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you." And then you finally like smack his finger out of his face, and then he beats the shit out of you. You know, that's like yeah. that. That's that's the greatest, I guess, the greatest analogy you can imagine over the Israel Palestine. Again, like I said, there's so many layers, and I would love to get into it more. But yeah, that's probably that's like another episode. But like, yeah, shout out to Corey Gil Shuster. That video project has had me thinking a lot about it. And um, Corey Gilchester is apparent. I, I can tell from watching the videos that he's he doesn't seem to be like an Orthodox Jew, but he does seem to be like somebody who's culturally Jewish. But he tends to be really, really fair to the people that he's interviewing, whether he agrees with them or not. Um, and he just kind of gets their opinion. And sometimes he makes a sarcastic comment if they say something like really out there, like, oh, you know, all the Jews need to leave. But yeah. In general, he's really fair. So shout out to that guy, Ask Project on YouTube. Really cool. Uh, I think we can move on to recent election happenings. I mean, it's oh, been God. a fucking shit show, man. <sighs> yeah. Um, we discussed this last time. We're just – and we discussed this personally on a daily basis. We're just so exhausted with the election cycle this year and just almost excited for it to be over, huh? Like just totally stoked for it to be done. Just figure it out. Just tell us when he's going to be president. You know, I don't know, it. man. I, I feel like there is not a light at the end of the tunnel sometimes. Like, I, I, in, <laughs> theory, in theory, I'm okay with, with Hillary being president. And, I, and maybe Trump would be okay, too. Like, maybe we wouldn't all die. I, I really don't know. But, um, but it's definitely taken on a depressing turn where it was exciting and entertaining for some amount of time. Now, especially after the last debate where Trump brought out Bill Clinton's sort of Sexual. rape accusers yeah. and um, told Hillary he would put her in jail. jail. And it's just been – I don't think it's ever been this negative before, maybe in like the 1800s or something. Yeah, like almost almost want to make him like duel it out, you know? Like uh, who was the president who shot another – like the shot the other candidate it's like in a duel? Probably like Andrew I Jackson, I think. Yeah, something like that. Or he was got shot. I don't know. He definitely yeah, was it, in duels, but that was a time when like duels still happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It seems like it seems like that time, you know, and like I don't know. And and then I go on Facebook and some people are having rational good discussions about it, and then other people are just going way left field or right field, either or they're just their opinions of it are so strong and so like negative against one person, you know, and I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know how to feel about it anymore because I, I guess I know too much about the subject that I'm just like, I don't even, or maybe I don't know enough. Who knows? But I just, I don't, I yeah, almost it feels becoming like, apathetic towards it. I you think, know? I think I can, yeah, I think, I think I can put it in a word. I think, I feel like all my thoughts on the subject are just trite and cliched at this point. Like, I don't feel like I can have like an interesting thought about it now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's my own lack of creativity, but I just feel like we've reached this point where we, we, we've got these choices. It's become really, really negative. I think that Hillary's platform is better. I think she'll be a better president, but other than that, I don't feel good at all about like the process I don't feel good about the fact that it seems like 35% of our country hates like another 35% of our country. I don't like – it just feels very, very negative. It feels like uh, the spotlight has been taken off of discussing policies, policies and it's become this personal battle. So yeah, it's – It's depressing is in summary. It is depressing and like they both know so much about each other, the Clintons and the Trumps. And I'm just waiting for one more video to come out about Trump. You know, like, 
I know the Clintons have some stuff up their sleeve about this guy. Like, I mean, he's going to get sh- – like, I mean, Trump lost the election, Tom. You know, mm-hmm. like, there's no there's no way he comes back from these scandals, you know. You can only excuse his behavior and his words so much, you know. Even as a vehement supporter – Actually, yeah. no, in hindsight, no, maybe not. Maybe. No, no, his, no, his vehement supporters are going to stay behind him. There's yeah. going to be, and I don't want to sound like Mitt Romney here with his, what was it, a 47% comment? Or like binders full of women. Yeah, I don't think it's 47%, but I think it's something like, I don't know, 30% or something of people are just going to support Trump literally no matter what he does, short of committing a violent crime against somebody like on camera like then if he like choked her then they probably would be like okay maybe we'll you know maybe we'll vote gary johnson but you know you know what interests me about that though tom what is that the people who are for trump Mm -hmm. almost seem to be more for trump because of the way he feels about certain issues like trade agreements and um trade agreements the way he wants to do his foreign policy Things like that, you know, of that nature, the ways he wants to, like, fix the border. And Hillary supporters just want to, mo- I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not going to generalize, I'm not going to, I'm just going to say, for the most part, the ones that I've I encountered, all are in congruence and agree with me as in, uh, like, saying, like, Hillary's not the best candidate, but never Trump, you know? And although there's a lot right. of never, never, I, I feel like the never Hillary people have moved on to Hillary after this recent weekend and the, and the, like, the, the Billy Bush comments that he that Trump was making in the bus, right? But I feel like the Trump supporters want him because of the things that the policies he's promised, and not they don't care about his words anymore. You know, they just they like him because he's not a career politician, and that because the status quo doesn't like him. You know, he's almost like a rebel candidate, mm-hmm. and I I I, re- I realized that this weekend. Like he's um he's a you president. just realized that this weekend, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so he's been came, marketed the entire campaign yeah, as like I, a I rebel it, can, rebel candidate. Yeah, and I I guess it just became clear to me, you know, that the yeah. fact that the, the it doesn't matter what he says or what comes out, people are going to excuse his behavior because it's hey, we don't want more of the same anymore, you know? Yeah. And so that's something that I'm still a Hillary. I think I think Hillary is a better candidate, better, less potential for being bad than Trump. Yeah, but I see I see why someone would like someone like Trump. You know what? What is um, before we move on? What would it look like if Trump was secretly sort of liberal and secretly wanted to sort of get rid of you know annoying laws that have been holding us back, like. Uh, I don't know marijuana legalization and <laughs> stuff know. like that. Yeah. Like, what if he isn't actually all about like going and bombing the shit out of other countries, and he's not actually a despot that he seems to be, and really he's just saying all the shit to manipulate people? Like, does that theory still seem plausible, or what do you think? Like, he just starts his presidency as like the most chill bro of all time, you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like the totally chillest dude like he becomes a people's president and just literally like yo you know what guys it's chill time in the united states um because towards the first half of the campaign i that was kind of i thought state, that right? was like a possibility and now yeah. as the campaign's gone on i've realized like no he really is just like a big rich piece of shit and like i can't i don't think i can really trust him to do much of anything that i'd want him to do yeah, um, the thing is, he doesn't speak enough about policies to know wh- where he stands. And if you look at his past, he was a liberal, you know, like he, he did lean more towards the liberal left. And it wasn't until recently, like with Obama and the birth certificate that he started leaning more conservatively. Yeah. So he basically he said, he said in 1999, I think yeah. he said, uh, he said Hillary has been through more than any woman should ever have to go through. And look at what he's putting her through now. Yeah, exactly. Threatening to put her in jail. By the <laughs> way, that has a lot of people upset because it sounds like a it's dictator. A, it's another thing that like a Stalin or a Hitler yeah. or a Mussolini. That's like a it's a dictator thing to do. Like threaten to put your political opponents in prison. 
totally um, unprecedented and just like the fact that he talks about making do making a way make making more like making stronger libel laws and just thing like things like that like totally unprecedented and just like well honestly really scary you know concerning because you don't want your president talking like that you know you just yeah. even he may feel that way hillary may be like this undercover reptilian and every time she steps off the stage she just unwraps her her um her human cloak and starts with her tongue flicking out, just, you know, making out <laughs> Bill Clinton. But yeah. we don't know that for a fact. Yeah. What I do see Donald Trump is being a guy who, if you were to like fill out 10 things to look for in a dictator, Donald Trump would be eight out of 10, you know, right. like a demo- demagogist has an angry following people who vehemently love him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you were to fill out the characteristics of a dictator or someone who... He just is, fits too many of them. Yeah, exactly. Like It's kind of scary. That's the concerning part about him. And it and a lot of people are like, oh, the media puts him on blast. And there's a media... Um, like, the media hates him. But, like, no. Like, I, I, I saw it live. Like, I, I watched him say those things. Like, it's not taken out of context. He said those things. Like, the words came out of his mouth. Like, he literally said them, you know, yeah. Tom? And so, yeah, he, 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 yeah. And I guess like towards the beginning of this election, I thought I was more afraid of Hillary being sort of the evil, like person who would do extra judicial type things and, and, um, maybe stomp on free speech and things like that. But I think as the campaign has gone on now, I really do think that she's just going to be Obama 2.0. And mm-hmm. probably in a good way, especially now that Bernie has held her to Bernie, by the way, wow, has done his impact on the election was was so strong with pushing her campaign farther to the left that I'm actually like happy with her platform. And like if she even tries to get all that shit done and she doesn't do anything crazy, then, man, she's light years ahead of Trump. But mm-hmm. I, OK, so we need to move on. But yeah. So election is crazy and mostly depressing. Um, yeah. So today's episode, we wanted to talk a little bit about what keeps you from having fruitful conversations with your community. And community can mean your friends, your strangers, whoever. Um, oftentimes, the people that we talk with the most are our friends or social media network uh, people. Uh, so Ro, you can start us off. Like, what do you think keeps you from sort of coming to a useful dialogue, and at least, if not coming to an agreement, then at least understanding each other more? Like, what what do you think are the obstacles in the way for you? So, I'm gonna give you an example of something that recently happened. I was uh, at my friend's pool. We were all hanging out. My friend, he's an older gentleman. Um, How much older? He's like he's like 41, 42. What, what color is his hair? What's his ethnicity? He is, uh, I guess he's like a, a Middle Eastern guy, like Lebanese, but okay. he's, was raised like in a white community. Like, you know, he's practically a white guy. He's know? a white like, boy. Okay. He's a white boy. And, um, like he played like football in high school and shit like that. You know, like he's just total white guy, like in, in the seventies, whatever. Anyways. So I was talking, we were at his pool party and I've already had discussions with him in regards to politics before and like we talked about like donald trump and hillary like a while back and he he said that he liked donald trump a lot more than hillary but this uh this weekend we were having a discussion and it was like all all, all my teammates were around like all older teammates and uh the topic of politics came out you know and yep. everyone kind of knows that i'm on facebook and i'm kind of active and i like like I'm I'm on social media and I'm typing away and shit and always giving my opinion, <laughs> right? And uh, I guess I guess I got the vibe that everyone was like, "Oh, here goes Rogelio again," you know. And I never I never I n- I don't rant in public. Right. I rant on social media and I do it in like forums that like none of those people are involved with, right? But I I definitely got that vibe like, "Oh God, don't talk about politics," you know. Uh, and everybody yeah. kind you know what I'm saying like yeah. everyone kind of was like. Some people started retreating from the pool. Like some people started acting like they were doing something else. And me and that guy, like, we both kind of like said a couple of things, but they were like neutral things. And then he said something that struck me as funny. But he he was like, he was like saying, making the point, you know, the the typical point that everyone kind of makes a consensus. Oh, both candidates suck, you know. Yeah. 
And I was going to go into, like, how both candidates suck, but also you have to consider the fact that, like, Hillary is, like, a smart fucking lady, like, lawyer, you know, has her JD, like, she's a smart lady versus Trump is kind of a jackass, you know? I was going to make that point, yeah. but before I made that point, he said, he said, he said this, and this and this is what when I knew, okay, maybe this is, like, a barking up the wrong tree, and maybe I should just definitely, like, disagree mm-hmm. and move on. He said... Yeah, have you seen the meme? Okay, have you seen the meme? <laughs> no, something's good. Something good's coming. <laughs> Something good's coming. Have you seen the meme where it says a bunch of shit that Hillary has done, like Benghazi, um, accepting TPP, a bunch of shit that she was like in the Senate for that got mm-hmm. accepted, like, and that maybe she, who knows if she voted for or against the resolution, right? And then, or like saying like a bunch of shit on like how Bill Clinton is a sexual assault guy and like how she supported him and the rape victims. Mm -hmm. And then it showed Donald Trump and he sent me this meme later on after the conversation. It it shows Donald Trump and it says, has said mean things. Right. (laughs) You know, like, and that, and then when I saw, when I saw that he said that, I was like, well, I kind of already know where you're coming from. So there's nothing, there's no discussion we can have that would be productive. It would just be you, are gonna vote but by the way he was voting for johnson so i mean that, okay. that, that was pretty cool. that's not but, too bad yeah but he was like he was already gonna make the point based on things that are conjecture and like opinion based and like kind of like okay she's a, a career politician like you're not you're literally not taking any of the things that she said all you you're, you're not considering anything that she said at okay, all can I, this can whole I interrupt? campaign can i interrupt you know? yeah. um i th- okay oh there's a couple things here um for one, Trump has done – you can point to bad things Trump has done. People have problems with how he's run his business, how he's treated his employees and his um, business partners and obviously how he's treated women, um, what he's said you know, now about women directly. Like, um, So, I mean, there's plenty of things and you can't act like saying things isn't super important. Obviously, it's hard to tie him directly to – political sort of actions because he hasn't been a politician before so Mm -hmm. that makes sense but he has been a businessman and people have had some issues with how he's run his business well when you say some tom i think you're being very generous you know there's been a lot you know there's been a like as as businessman goes donald trump has establishment as kind of like a like a fucking like a shark you know just a literal shark you know so You know, I think that's that's you're being generous when you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I think you know? we're talking nasty shit, and I don't know how much of it is true, but I, I'm talking about things like having people build something for you, like a smaller business build a building for you, and then just like not paying them. Right, things and like, like the like girl, that. the girls who like sang for him at the beginning of the campaign trails. Yeah, like he didn't pay them, you know, and this, that's just an example. Like, and people don't even like that is indicative of how bad the campaign has been you know how the selection cycle is uh, anyways we're, we're distracted from the original conversation but right yeah go ahead so yeah. yeah so yeah i mean it sounds like at least you and this other guy had like a decent back and forth no it was like a a four sentence back and forth and then it was like um you know i was just quiet and i and I kind of didn't follow up or try right. to understand more. And so I, maybe problem, if we, so, the problem you're talking about, and I've experienced this a lot before, is like a lot of people just don't want to talk about uh, these topics that fall under this. It depends on your friend group. Some people are like some friend groups are more or less willing to talk about it. Some friend groups are completely just bored by it, and they just don't have any like opinions at all really on it. Um, and then some other people like don't want to talk about it because like. They don't want to offend other people or it's perceived as being like controversial. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's really interesting because these – a lot of these things conceptually are the things that affect people the most, right? The election, politics, legislation, um, you know, religion has a big effect on people. These controversial topics and yet nobody wants to talk about them. Like do you see like a disconnect there or is it just me? No, I definitely, I definitely see a disconnect there, and I think maybe if it was just me and that guy, we could have like had a private conversation. But in the group setting, it was definitely a weird vibe. And I know all those guys have an opinion, and I think what it was, Tom, is that I think they did, they didn't want to offend me. You know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, and, and I don't know, I'm not sure if that comes from the fact that like I voiced my opinions, 
or maybe they hold a different opinion than me. And I think that's something that I think that we wanted to talk about specifically in this podcast is the fact that like if you have differing opinions, like different opinions and different ideologies, it's okay to talk to them, to talk yeah. about them. You know, like it's so it's it's definitely okay, and it makes for a good conversation if you know how to approach the conversation and not just. You know, you know, you, yeah. How, how would you describe like someone who would approach it wrong? You know, like, yeah, I guess one th- revelation that I've had, and I don't actually know when I had it exactly. I think that I've, al- I've always kind of thought like this, at least for my like adult life, is that whenever I'm making a decision about something or have a, an opinion on something, I, in my mind, I'm basically rolling the dice, right? Especially when it comes to who I'm going to vote for and like elected officials and things like that. Like I am rolling a dice basically when I say that I prefer X person over Y person, when I prefer Billy over Bob, all I'm saying is I think Billy, if elected will more likely do more good things to cause a net positive. You get what I'm saying? I could be wrong. And if he gets elected and bad things happen, that isn't like proof positive that, um that i was wrong right for a variety of reasons right first of all because bob wasn't elected and we don't know what he would have done but second of all because i i I don't know i'm not saying that they're perfect right i'm just saying like this is my my viewpoint and i think a lot of people come from the direction of i've chosen my tribe the chance of me changing my tribe is zero basically Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. the chance of me you know maybe if you're lucky they'll at least pretend to listen to you but most people have chosen their tribes and they're not changing them yeah exactly so like exactly and that's i think that's a a big problem with speaking about these things you know it's like people already have made their decisions and they feel as if you're attacked because people attach their ideologies or their views to their egos, you know, I think that's something that you and I don't do necessarily because if someone tomorrow told me that Hillary Clinton literally eats babies, I would want to vote for Donald Trump, you know, or like mm-hmm. if told me like something serious about Hillary Clinton, something that was I could follow through with it and like really see like actual proof, not just things taken out of context. And then as soon as you open the article or just like a headline, as soon as you open the article, you can see like, OK, I can see how this happened, you know. Yeah, and, like if and, I and, if I found out that Hillary and the Clintons actually literally like we found hard evidence that they ordered the death of tens of people, like murdered people, and Donald Trump's just like a shitty asshole businessman, okay, that's kind of tipping the scales in the Trump direction. Like I'd rather have shitty asshole businessmen than literal, you know, calling murders. hits on people. Murders. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people I think they don't they, they, they've already made their choice, they already made a decision. And so I, I think that's the big issue. In regards to religion, I think it's awkward because of the same reasons. You know, you have you, basically your religion isn't has nothing to do, very little to do with what you believe, what you actually truly believe, but really ge- where you're geographically born and who you're around and where you happen to be in the world. That's, and that's who where your parents your, were. Yeah, who your parents were, who your community is, like religion that's all it is and people don't want to talk about it just simply because that's something that can be truly like by 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 saying you're a christian by saying you're a muslim by saying you're a jew you're saying that you're gonna go you have the ticket to heaven the key to the mountaintop the way to the summit and and other people don't you know what i'm saying i can see how that can be offensive for someone you know absolutely i've been i've been offended by someone saying that I'm going to go to hell, you know, by that's, yeah. So that's almost like, um, this is the trouble with religion and full disclosure. I'm like not religious. Um, but, uh, well, I don't know. We can talk about that later, but I think that, yeah, you're making assertions about other people's destiny. When you talk about religion, sometimes my background with religion is kind of interesting because I was raised Baptist, but it didn't take, (laughs) So I, <laughs> it didn't take. It didn't take. So like I started studying a lot of other religions as I was, you know, growing up, and I kind of landed on Buddhism as like all you know stoner white boys do, and and started thinking about that a lot. And I, Buddhism is such a, at least depending on which 
track of Buddhism you're, you're following, it's such a compatible religion with other religions because you can actually separate a, sh- a shit ton of um, sort of assertions of Buddhism and advice from Buddhism and philosophy from Buddhism from it without really getting too much into the supernatural stuff. And it's a common mistake to be like, oh, Buddhism is a philosophy, dude. Like, it's not a philosophy. It's actually a religion. Like, don't go to, like, Tibet and say it's just a (laughs) philosophy because they have, like, all this crazy, like, spiritual imagery and iconography and, like, demons and, like, you can be reincarnated as a hungry ghost or, like, as a god. Like, there's definitely religion there. But... Yes, but one of the things that most sects of Buddhism teach, I think, not an expert, is sort of always question yourself and always kind of follow your own intuition. And this is something that I feel like allows me to very easily talk about religion because I'm always just sort of subscribed to that belief of like, okay, well, I could be wrong. I haven't heard anything from a Christian yet that would convince me that Jesus Christ is the only begotten son and that I will go to hell if I don't ask for salvation from him. Um, you get what I'm saying? Like, like, and yeah. pe- other people, I guess, have already made that decision that that's, that's what they're doing and it's not worth talking about. Yeah. So in regards to like conversations, I think, a more fruitful conversation would be politics rather than religion. You know, religion to me, I tend not to touch it with people simply because like, unless like you have a really interesting viewpoint or something about your religion or um, I want to learn more, you know, obviously about everything. But if you're trying to, I think the disconnect comes from like someone trying to convert me, you know, and it's yep. happened to me so many times where my curiosity gets the best of me <laughs> and I'll end up, I'll end up in a mosque and fucking beltway eight, like walking in and like s- witnessing, literally witnessing the men walking in through one door and the women walking through another door, you know? And like, I mean, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's, if that's you, that's you, you know what I'm saying? But like mm-hmm. I have, b- because of my curiosity, I have been, almost converted to almost every religion in the books you know <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so i have i've learned you know what like my spirituality is simply being more conscious and just like you just like every morning try to question myself and challenge myself every single day i don't have the answers i don't i'm not perfect i don't purport to be i don't pretend like i am mm-hmm. and i'm trying to figure it out you know and i think i'm not i'm I'm going to sound arrogant when I say this, but I feel like that's a healthy way to be a human. And then you don't have anger all the time. You're not angry. A lot of people are angry. You know, they're very, very angry, you know? Yeah. And what do you think that anger comes from? It feels from? good, like, not knowing things. Like, once I realized that I don't know everything, I realized also that everybody else really doesn't know shit either. And mm-hmm. we're all just, like, having our own little personal strategies to get through the day and to, like you know a pretend that we know things and like we don't we don't know shit and knowing shit and thinking you know shit always brings you down because there are things that run counter to your assumption that you know stuff and uh it it it, it brings you down you know it's an attachment yeah exactly so like if, if throughout the day you have if you like fucking muslims are assholes you know i hate them so much and then some muslim guy like you get in a car crash with him and he pulls you out the car crash all of a sudden you're mad because you thought you hated all muslims and now you there's one muslim that you'd like you know yeah and um i think that i i think that prejudice is such an interesting topic too because like i don't i mean we should talk about this later but yeah that's that's another really yeah. interesting no the, the islam thing is really interesting though because Thankfully, in America, we've reached kind of a point where, I mean, we're I think we're more secular now than ever. And um, one of the reasons why having a religious discussion isn't, in my opinion, that fruitful, really, is because religion matters less than it ever did now. Mm-hmm. Of course, there are still areas where it matters and people obviously still care about the religion. But in general, I think we've reached a spot where it's not. Uh, that big of a deal so yeah like why would i even have a discussion about like gay marriage with somebody like you know we won gay marriage is a thing um yeah it's not going to be repealed anytime soon i don't think so that's a step forward but there's still a lot of political issues that are worth being discussed the islam thing is interesting because in other countries um islam has a very strong 
opinion on on politics whereas if you look at um christianity throughout the world yes christianity has left its imprint on some governments but there isn't too, there aren't too many places where we follow like christian law you know christian doctrine yeah buddhist law like right most i guess um westernized countries western countries follow like a secular idea of government you know i think it's the united i saw an article that said like the united states is the only place that makes students like say pledge of allegiance and like say god in their pledge of allegiance or like in god we trust and our dollar bills you know i think that you know people are when they argue that like the united states oh, is founded, i, I doubt like, we're the Christian. only country though that, that makes people pledge allegiance we're like one of the few western countries that does yeah that, maybe you know? maybe a few western countries yeah yeah so um i think people the fear with islam though is like people don't want sharia law and you know how you stop sharia law is that you set a precedent that a country has to be like your laws have to be dictated purely on a secular basis you know so no one can come in and make a sharia law you yeah know? so that, that's also but, like a that's a really big uh, that's like a perfect microcosm of what we're talking about is like it's uncomfortable to talk about some of the problems centering in the middle eastern world now because you know, depending on your point of view, Islam does have a role to play. Um, since it does have a doctrine that says this is the legal system um, that should be implemented. And so it's very hard. You know, yeah, sure. I respect your religion. I respect your ability to do whatever you want in your free time. That's that's great. The issue is that this set of beliefs also has a set of beliefs embedded within it about law and the legal system and it's not based on sort of the same foundation of due process that our western um legal system is based on and i don't know about you we have kind of a f fucked up situation in a lot of ways but overall we have a we decent a legal system you know yeah, absolutely so i guess if we were in short to answer the question What's the best way to approach having a conversation? Like, what's the best way to approach having a fruitful so, so you conversation? Do you want to spin this a in a positive direction? Like, what techniques have we found that yeah, yeah, helped exactly. us? Yeah, that's like, a what, great idea. How, um, how can I be at the pool and have a conversation with that guy next time? You know, because I did want to have a conversation. I was itching. Tom. How can I, I have itching. a conversation with 41-year-old, hairy, Middle Eastern <laughs> guy who really loves Trump? Actually, he was a Johnson supporter, so... Um, all, not all Middle Eastern people are hairy, so I should I should say that. Um, <laughs> no, he was a he was a. Wait, was he, he hairy was he, though? Was he hairy? Uh, I think he's got chest hair. I, I okay. didn't count all the. Hairs I count. I him, count. But... I count chest hair. Like that's kind of like the line between hairy and not hairy. If you're not if you a hairy guy, chest hair? you just don't like have you don't have chest hair. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like yeah, there's yeah, guys yeah. that don't have chest hair, and then and then those people are not hairy. Um, <laughs> okay. What if you have like hairy legs, like super hairy legs, are still not hairy because of like the ba like if they the all that matters is hairy chest. If they don't have a hairy chest, they're not hairy. Is that the line you cross? I feel like that is a good litmus test. Like if you were going to say, like if you could only look at one square inch of the body, um, to and, and you had to guess based on that whether the rest of the the body was hairy, I think I would go for like a nice little chest, little sternum, <laughs> little square yeah. inch of sternum. And then that way you know whether or not they're hairy in the rest of their body. Yes. Okay. So here's <laughs> here's my strategies, or here's some strategies I've had recently. Um, first of all, it is I think important to know when it's just not going down. Like you should not be trying to have this conversation. I think I think a good strategy is to think about okay, maybe it's okay to talk about something, but I can only take it so far. Like you need to be realistic. Like. Like if you're if you made up your mind at the beginning of walking into the pool that you're going to convince this person to vote for Hillary Rodham Clinton, uh, that might have been a mistake. Like you're probably that is not a good goal and it's going to color your how you talk to that person. But if you make the decision that, OK, I'm going to listen to them, I'm going to just kind of maybe not even say my full opinion, but say a couple of things that that maybe highlight a viewpoint that they haven't thought of before, you know, you're not, you're not going to be able to get them to go a hundred percent. Hillary Clinton isn't a reptile. Maybe you can only get them to thinking, uh, Hillary Clinton isn't, it's you a know, gecko. Isn't Satan. Something. Yeah. Hillary Clinton is yeah, just an amphibian. So what did you, what did you say the other day? Um, Hillary Clinton doesn't, 
plug hairs from Cthulhu's balls or something. What'd you say? Hillary, I, I don't know. Like Hillary Clinton just like is, is, is Cthulhu's scrotum personified. <laughs> Like, yeah, exactly. like you make set these realistic boundaries before you enter something, and and this goes in other situations too, like professional settings. Like, um, I actually work, I think, in a pretty liberal workplace, and we actually will mention like little jabs at Trump sometimes, like on our little Slack channel or on, um, you know, like when we're chatting, and but we don't go too far with it, right? We don't go like nobody's like, oh yeah, and fuck all Trump voters, like nobody yeah. says that, and if somebody was a Trump voter. Like, I don't think that it would be, like, the biggest deal. But nobody says, like, I'm voting for Hillary. You know, like, unless, like, unless, like, you just keep it a little bit neutral, even if, even if you are jabbing a little bit. Just know your boundaries, basically. Right. So, I guess, I guess for next time, the best way to approach it would be to, you know, find out where he's coming from first and then make my points, you know, and then, and then ask him questions. I think that's, I, I think that's. In general, what I do most often is like I ask them a bunch of questions to see where they're coming from and what they feel. And um, sometimes I don't engage just simply based on the fact that like I know it's, it's going to be, you know, just there's nothing I can tell them. You know, their opinions are based on things that I don't even consider as sources, you know. Right, That's, right, right. Right. Figure out if it's but, worth it. Figure out if you – because maybe the best choice was to like – lightly bring it up and then just like joke about it the whole time and don't even like make any attempt at serious conversation because you realize that that wasn't going to happen and it was also going to piss everybody else off even if they are a little bit silly for instantly getting pissed off, getting pissed off at like the first sign of politics maybe it just wasn't the right time at the pool party to bust out your your liberal <laughs> credentials yeah exactly well um yeah i guess that's the episode. Um, so did we decide on a tagline, Tom? What do you think? Um, do you want to say? Man, I just want to say... Um, no, actually, I don't have a tagline. I don't want to do it until it's ready. Like, we got to incubate it. Here's what we're going to do. From each episode, from now on, we're going to think of a new tagline. And, okay. and, and, and if one sticks, it sticks. And if not, uh, then it doesn't. We we'll keep changing it like a chameleon, like a like a skin changing reptilian overlord named Clinton. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for listening to No Offense with Tom and Roe. Don't forget to have conversations with your bros. There you go. There, <laughs> there you go. go. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we will see you soon.